Hello, this is Tom Cloud with this bi-monthly Precious Metals Market Update. Kind of a hodgepodge this week of, of questions and observations and well, my opinion, and they're searching for opinions. So I'm just going to kind of hit the high spots this uh, time. We'll start with the dollar drop of 109 to 101 something since January 1st. We've seen the dollar go down 8%. And that's the reason gold's gone up 8%. The stock market's done nothing. So you sit and look and realize that the dollar drop as it goes to double digits, meaning below 100 to 98. 92, when it gets below that, is going to free fall. Everybody in the world agrees on that just about. I mean, I'm talking about in the world of investments, whether it's foreign stocks or, or precious metals or whatever it is. They look, if the dollar gets down to 92, it's going to be a breakaway, which is only another 10%, uh, another 10%, and that would be, be it. So we also have gotten the rumors, yes, that Kenya is leaving the dollar and are asking 140 small countries to dump the dollar just like Kenya is going to. Kenya means nothing by itself, but with another 100 plus small countries that will use the Chinese yuan probably, but they will use another currency. So that is something that we've got to watch. Brazil also added in about three weeks ago when they said, we no longer were trading the U.S. dollar. It's a dishonest currency because it's created out of thin air. Nothing backs it. it. It just prints. We just print like a machine. So Brazil goes now to the Chinese you won that probably will be backed by gold, probably not 100% gold, but some fractional 40, 50, 60% of the numbers I hear most often as to what will happen there. So you've got that. The big one that we're all worried about is the budget deficit and the budget itself, as this country will have to close down in June. Now, as I filmed this on the 20. 6th, 7th here of April, Congress has passed a bill to raise the debt ceiling $1.5 trillion. Well, that's nothing. The interest alone on the debt is 4% on $32 trillion. It's over $1.2 trillion just on the debt, the interest on the debt. So you look at this thing as in a free fall run away, and that's the reason the dollar is getting hammered. I mean hammered to see it this year already go down 8%, and the big stuff hadn't even happened yet, being the battle on the budget. Uh, Biden says he will veto it if, 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 if his uh, Congress, his Senate, does not uh, vote it down. And they probably will because they control uh, the Senate now, the Democrats. So you look at that rumor that China... And with China and Japan, who are the largest owners of our treasury bills, will start liquidating in the third quarter this year. And that I keep hearing from our European contacts that it's evident they're, they're going to leave, start because our dollar is going down in value. And even though the interest rates are going up to try to make up the difference, it's not happening, still not a good investment for China and uh, Japan holding, holding going forward. Warren Buffett said last week that the banking crisis isn't over. What we've seen is just the beginning of it. We've seen 186 banks fail the stress test in the last uh, quarter. We've seen big name banks that are in trouble, big name. Now, when you saw the bailout that Biden gave when they had the big uh, bank crisis in Silicon Valley, in Signature, in Republic, banks going under, we bailed them out. But I can tell you that was a gift to people that supported his administration. Because remember in 2008 and 9, it's Biden himself that stood up and said, we will never bail a bank out again in this country. Well, they didn't for about 14 years. But here they have, but not going forward. So if you leave your money in the bank, it is not your money. 
That's not me saying it. It's not your money. It's the bank's money, and you're a debtor. They owe you money, but it's their money. We have never seen the volume in 47 years since I founded this company. Never seen the volume like we have. We have people moving 3 million, 2 million, 1 million, 150,000, 300,000 out of the bank because they know that they saw what happened to Silicon Valley. 92% of the money was unsecured by the FDIC. So the people with less than 250,000 that were insured only made up 8% of the money. It's the 92% that was made up by people that had more than 250,000 in there. So there's no insurance. So anyway, we continue to see people uh, moving out as quickly as they can. There's going to be chaos in uh, May and June as we look at this uh, deficit thing. It's going to get worse. 1.5 trillion is a joke. Here we're six months into fiscal 2023, halfway through the fiscal year that ends uh, September 30th, and we're already have a one trillion debt in only six months. Another trillion be a two trillion dollar budget deficit this year. There's never been over 1.2. We're talking about another 50 percent in the budget deficit coming between now and September 30th. And it could get worse than that because the interest rates may not be through going up, which could continue to raise interest costs, killing the real estate market, killing the stock market, and continuing to send uh, gold and silver up as real money. And everybody knows when all is said and done, there's a restart worldwide, could be as early as this year, it's going to be gold and silver are going to be the people that win. You should now decide what percentage of your assets you want in metals and get them because they're harder to get. Premiums have been at the highest level ever. Premium being defined as what I pay for the major wholesaler before I put a markup on it and sell it to you. So we look at that. Um, the other thing that has been huge we talked about all last year was the central banks through uh, buying gold and could count it at market value, the only asset beside G7 bonds, stock uh, bonds, uh, their bonds and notes. So you've got that situation now, and the Fed stress test uh, is going to continue to see more and more banks not able to pass it. And that's when you'll start seeing, like we've seen in Switzerland, where the biggest bank has bought up, the United Bank of Switzerland has bought up Credit Suisse. Credit Suisse, the second biggest in Switzerland, went under owing trillions of dollars. Trillions, not billions, trillions. And that is, banks need to ask them to be the same exact way. It, every day it hasn't happened, <clears throat> it gives you, the investor, a better chance to get out of it. Get a lot of questions about 401ks. <clears throat> I'll make two comments on them, and that's all. One, we have more people retiring than we've ever had because baby boomers are coming out. And basically what you should do is take your 401k, put it into two self-directed IRAs, one for stocks and bonds, one for gold and silver. Then you have two, and you can liquidate and move them back and forth as you need to. But that is mandatory because if you leave it with the company, it can only invest in stocks and bonds. There's not a, a way to do gold and silver. But there is some companies that will give you a loan and you can borrow cash, buy gold and silver, then repay yourself plus a fee. But I, I don't know a lot of people that are doing that. So I say get out of that because the biggest pool of money in the world is a 401k United States market. And if you don't think our government will go and freeze that and make you buy bonds, sell off your stocks, which will send them straight down, and make you buy government securities because they've run out of ways to do it. There's nothing else to do. And that is what you better be scared of. And last but not least, the Sweden, the country of Sweden put two 
$1.5 billion with Silicon Valley Bank. And not as a deposit. This was as an investment. So they lost, can you imagine this? A country lost $2 billion from one bank, one bank in the United States. And people, you think you've seen things. You haven't seen anything. Just doing this 47 years, I can, my mind just runs crazy remembering this thing and that thing and this battle and that battle. And every time we, the citizens, let them get away with it. We continue to let these, these politicians buy votes by ruining our dollar. And poor middle class always pays the bill because that's where the population is. There's many more on paying than there are the wealthy. So you've got to be using common sense because when June comes, in my opinion, the chaos and the premiums on metals, the calls coming in, hard to return calls on time, frustration for everybody, I would beat that and get out there in front. We'll continue to do objects because they're part of our lives. But just use common sense and diversify as Ecclesiastes 11.2 tells us to divide our wealth. Yes, seven or eight ways because no man knows what disaster will come upon the land. You can reach us at 800-247-2812. With this Precious Metals Market Update, this is Tom Cloud signing in.